MacBook or an iPad because there's an aluminum back that's either shaded silver or dark slate gray on the black model. So let's talk about that screen first because this is the first time that the iPhone has gone for a larger screen. There's been a retina display movement that doubled the pixel resolution but never a larger screen that went beyond 3.5 inches. That's done here but it hasn't really changed the feel of the iPhone although it is longer than before. It still has that iconic look and really you've shaved a little bit of space on the top and bottom here to get that extra long screen in. It's not extra long by Android standards. In fact at 4 inches and a 16-9 aspect ratio this actually still falls a little bit on the small end of those honking large surfboard phones as I like to call them. And the width still feels the same so it actually feels surprisingly holdable in a hand and doesn't really feel awkward word to grab and all of those apps mean that you have even more to choose from on your home page creating a larger grid of 20 plus 4 below. The real killer app for this larger video screen is video playback because now that it's a 16:9 resolution you get less letterboxing which creates an even larger sense of effective space on the iPhone. You will find that on photos you're actually going to get some pillar boxing on the sides because the photos that you take on your iPhone are not 16:9. But hold these two next to each other and you can see, yes, the screen's longer, but to a lot of people casually, they may not notice. And that seems to be the plan. This is not really a brand new super large element of the phone. This really is sort of a gentle redesign and lengthening of the iPhone. Now let's get to 4G LTE. Now some people don't know or care about what LTE is. What well, 4G LTE is is much faster data speeds than on 3G and it's really dramatic if you've never used it before. In fact, there's a good chance it's going to be faster than your home Wi-Fi. That's the case for me. In fact, when I tried using the AT&T version at home, I found that LTE speeds were almost twice what I was getting on my home Wi-Fi. Maybe I have terrible home Wi-Fi, but I think it's pretty average at about 9 megabits per second and this was getting almost close to 20 megabits per second. This is the AT&T model. I can't speak for Verizon or Sprint yet. But that brings up another point. Not all iPhone flavors are exactly the same this time around. Now you can use data and calls at the same time with the AT&T version, but you can't with the iPhone 5 via Verizon or Sprint. Now how does the battery hold up? That's a good question because this iPhone is actually thinner and lighter than before. You're dealing with percentages, 18% thinner, 20% lighter. The thing you're really going to notice is maybe not so much the thin element, but that it's light. It's really light. It makes the iPhone 4 and 4S feel much more leaden and dense. Battery life so far, stay tuned for our full benchmark test, have been pretty good. I've been using it all day long on plug it at 8 a.m., use it till the night as much as I can, and it hangs in there. It seems to be paralleling the iPhone 4S, except for the fact that this is using 4G LTE. There are other additions too. The camera's been tweaked a little bit. It's still 8 megapixels, but there are some additional features built in, and it works faster. Now, while the camera on the rear may not have had a lot of changes, the front-facing camera has. It's now an HD camera, 720p, and it will take a lot sharper photographs and really nice crisp video for all of you that like to look at yourselves in your iPhone. Another design change you can totally see on the bottom of the iPhone 5 is that headphone connector is now on the bottom. It's like an iPod Touch. And also the speakers have been reoriented and in the middle there, that's the lightning connector, the controversial lightning connector. That's because you're going to have to change out your USB cables, your accessories to accommodate that. Now, it is a reversible connector and plugs in a lot more easily than the previous 30 pin. It's nice abstractly, except for the fact that if you have old accessories, you're going to have to buy a 30 pin to lightning adapter, which may not work with all your peripherals. It will allow audio, but it will not allow video. You're going to have to buy a separate lightning to VGA or HDMI cable separately to use with the iPhone 5. Inside the iPhone 5 is a new processor, an A6 processor, which Apple claims is up to two times faster than the iPhone 4S's A5 processor. Just like every year, one of the biggest features in a new iPhone is the new version of iOS. iOS 6 will be available for owners of older iPhones, but it's baked into the iPhone 5, and there are some features that will be really fun to use, such as the new Maps app that includes 3D flyovers, and Passbook, which is an interesting Apple 